In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build your own flight simulations by using Python and Flight Gear. If you are someone interested in flight dynamics, aviation, aerospace as a whole, if you want to learn how to build your own flight dynamic models and simulate them in an open source software, this video is for you. Let's start. Let's start with the fundamentals on learning Python to use it with Flight Gear. This video is for engineers, as I mentioned before, or even a hobbyist, anyone who is interested in developing their own flight simulations by using open source software. If you are someone who works in guidance, navigation, or control, if you're someone who likes to design autopilots for Arduino or for unmanned aircraft, or if you have a general interest in aerospace and automotive design, this video is for you. Let's say, for example, you work in the industry or you are building a new drone and you want to design a new control system for the pitch autopilot for some new airplane. You want to see how this autopilot will behave in the simulation environment before you actually do a test on the real plane. This will save cost and improve efficiency. So as a typical engineer, you will design the autopilot most likely using Simulink and MATLAB because they have the toolboxes and then integrate it into some scenario where you do a takeoff and you see how the plane responds to the input commands. After developing the trajectory, you can then see it in Flight Gear. Flight Gear, I had covered a video on this before. It is an open source flight simulator, works on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. It can interact with MATLAB, Simulink, JSP Sim. That is an open source flight dynamics model, Python and C++. It's used by academia and industry around the world. A few years back, I had made a very successful video on how to connect Simulink to Flight Gear and MATLAB. It's done by using this .bat file here. You have a Simulink model, which uses the aerospace toolbox, which can be downloaded from the MathWorks website for your specific MATLAB installation. You have a MATLAB script, which you might need to work with the Simulink file here. On the right, you see how this model can typically look where you have a bunch of heads up displays which show you the values in your airplane. For example, the, the roll angle, the pitch angle. This here is the latitude, longitude, altitude, yaw, pitch and roll, the sixth DOF of the aircraft, position and the orientation. To use flight gear in Python, you have two options here. So the first one is where there are no flight dynamics inside of flight gear. So this means you create your dynamics in Python script. You can then visualize the entire trajectory along with the control surface movement. What a control surface is, is the, for example, the elevator, the ailerons on the airplane. Those are control surfaces. You can see how they move in flight gear. If you do have flight dynamics, however, you can send and receive commands into Python where you send the 6DOF, which is the aircraft's position and the orientation to Python. You do some processing and then you send the control surface commands from Python back into Flight Gear. For example, this would be representative of an autopilot where you have a two-way communication. It's a feedback loop, as you can see in this picture here. So Python can be used in very nice ways by using a Flight Gear API. I will show you a few examples and I will give you all the building blocks that you need. Use Python for your own projects. You can do a lot of very cool stuff, which you will see soon. So if you are excited, let's start. Before we start, let's go over the documentation. I want you guys to focus on a few pages here. So th this is the actual Flight Gear Python documentation. We have a few examples. The ones I want you to focus on are the first ones here, FTM controls and wing. Now, in most likely, as an engineer, you'll be designing a flight control system of some sort and doing a simulation, in which case you will most likely just stick to the FTM one where you define all your flight dynamics and input that. If you want to use the controls loop, you can for movement of the control surfaces on the airplane. You can also use it if you want to interact with the flight gear dynamics and design an autopilot, as I had explained before. Okay, we have a bunch of APIs here. Let's go to the first one, FTM v24. So FTM struct is what you need to focus on here. And let's open this one. Okay, so if you recall, 
when you specify flight dynamic simulation, you need to specify all the inputs to the airplane, which is its orientation, its position, X, Y, Z, latitude, longitude, altitude, along with any control surface movements. So the values which you need to focus on are phi rad, theta rad, psi rad, that's the yaw pitch and the roll angles. So in this case, roll, pitch, and yaw. That is the orientation of the airplane. So those variables correspond to that. You also have the side slip and the angle of attack here, alpha and beta. If your simulation is using those, then you can also use those here, these inputs here. You then have, let's focus on control surfaces. You have the elevator, you have the flaps and the ailerons. So these variables you, you can use if your simulation needs those. Let's also look at position. The most important one, you need to know where your airplane is, latitude, longitude, and altitude. So lat, rad, long, rad, and then altitude here. So these ones here. You also have above the ground level, how far you are above the ground. So this struct course has all the variables that which are interest to you, you, you can use in your simulation. So let's go back here. Let's go into the controls page. In a similar fashion, you have the control struct. You have spoilers, speed brakes, and more. Let's go into the examples. So we'll be doing a couple of examples I will show you. So let's start with those now. We are ready to test Python with Flight Gear. So to do this, you need to make sure you have do have Flight Gear installed. I'm just going to open my Python and Flight Gear at the same time. So let's start with that. I use Spider as my IDE. You can use something else, no problem. So what I've done is I've copied the first example, the FDM loop into my IDE. So this example here, I've just copied and pasted it there. Let's also open Flight Gear and set things up. So after many years, it's been almost seven years now since I made that MATLAB video. I've since upgraded my Flight Gear to version 2020.3.18. It's a lot better than the old one for sure. I'm going to select an airplane. It does not matter which airplane you select. You need to specify it in Flight Gear itself, not in your Python script. So I have the Cessna Citation X, it's a nice business jet. If you don't have it, you can use something else. Just use an airplane that is already installed. In my settings, this is the most important part. The first thing I've done is set FDM to null. What that means is all my flight dynamic inputs come from Python. I don't use any built-in flight dynamics in flight gear. This is very important because you will not need to do that. The only case where you need to use the built-in dynamics is if you're doing an autopilot where you have feedback from flight gear to Python. My max FPS or frames per second is 50. Based on your monitor and your PC capabilities, you need to specify that. Just experiment with it. Let's open Python here and let's go in the example now. So here we have a bunch of code and let me explain how this code works. You can see in this comment that it is recommended to start FDM null and max FPS. So it tells you in the code what to use. You have to copy all this here, native FDM socket out, 30 localhost. This just establishes a connection between Flight Gear and Python. So if you see my Flight Gear again, you can see I've copied those inputs over here for both localhost 5501 and 5502 as well. Okay, so we are ready to start, but I want to explain the code before I begin. The program starts over here, if name equals main. In Python, this is the initializing of your program. I first make an FDM connection with version 24. If you have 24 or 25, you can choose either one of them. And then I establish an event pipe by connecting the receiver and the transmitter. So this re receiving transmitting is how Python and Flight Gear interact with each other. So in this case, I have a receiver and this callback. So the receiver is Python sending commands into Flight Gear. The transmitter is Flight Gear sending commands back into Python. You see how in this receiver here, I have this callback, which is defined up above. What I'm doing here is I'm sending commands for the phi angle, which is the roll angle of the airplane and the altitude. Just those two here, phi and altitude. I'm sending those commands from Python to flight gear. In my transmitter, I don't have anything because I'm not receiving any commands from flight gear into Python. There is only a one-way connection here. I then press start. So this starts a loop and this will run each time step. So I just have an infinite loop here because I want the program to keep going until I stop it. I send the event, parent send, and then I wait for 0.01 seconds. Now you have to wait here because you need 
give flight gear time to update if you don't have this you will have an overflow so make sure you have this command here this time was set to 0 0.05 i believe in the example here or 0 0.5 in fact i just made it 0 0.01 you, you can change it to something else but just experiment see what values you can use in just a brief highlight i'll show you the source code and let's go straight into fdm connection so this one here it just has one constructor where i specify the version in this case it is 24 so you see how this 24 gets passed in into this argument here and then it just checks it that's all i have an fg connection class which has the connect rx the receiver and the transmitter so you see how it corresponds to UDP output or input respectively there. If you want, you can look into the source code in more details and see how things work. It does use a lot of Python built-in commands like multi-process socket systems. Now you may not understand this all and even I don't, but it's not a big deal for this case. If you are studying computer science or operating systems, you may find this more interesting for sure. So let's actually run this program here. The first thing you do is you have to start flight gear. It tells you in this example what to do. So I'm just gonna start my flight here. So just on the loading screen, let's go back. So it's just setting up. I start my aircraft because I wanna see what it looks like on the heads up on the pilot display here. I'm gonna go back to my Python script. You don't have to do anything in flight gear because it'll be run from Python fully and press play. So you see we have a kind of a stupid simulation. So since the roll angle in the altitude is all that is changing, that will all is all you're going to see here. You won't see the aircraft move because I'm not changing my latitude and my longitude. I'm just changing my roll angle and my height. You can see how the flight dynamics built in is disabled and everything is coming from Python. Pretty cool that you can actually do this, right? Like I was so mind blown. <laughs> So I'm going to stop this program and let's open another example which I made, testing 2. So this example is a bit more complex. I'm going to close Python and Flight Gear and restart it because you need to restart each time. Okay, the first thing I've done is restarted Python and Flight Gear. You have to restart each time because the localhost connection is still active. If you figure out a way to not re restart each time you press play in Python, just let me know. Because I've still yet to find that out so my settings are the same and my aircraft is the same i'm going to show my example which i made this time it's not in the built-in examples all i've done is have all my inputs inside this callback here so what i'm doing is in my infinite loop i just put my sleep time at 0 0.05 seconds this here is the same i establish my connection from python to flight gear the same way inside of my callback this time i'm changing all the variables which you had seen before in that struct so if you recall i had said that this fdm struct contains all the variables that you can input as a user in flight gear from python to define the flight dynamics of the airplane i'm just testing it out here so i have my, my altitude my roll angle yaw angle pitch angle latitude longitude elevator ailerons and rudder. so i have all the inputs here and I'm just changing them by some random number. I'm just adding a value and then having a sine deflection, so a sinusoidal curve for my control surfaces. I'm also testing something. This value of i, I will want to see that i will change. If you are familiar with flight simulation from dynamics, I think you have a hint of why I'm using this. I'm testing this i here. I will tell you after, but it's like a hint for what's coming next. <laughs> anyway, so we have this here. You can see that I is defined outside my callback. So it's a global variable. If I want to access a global variable outside, inside of a function, you need to specify global I. Because if I just comment this out, you see that this I is not, it's there, but it doesn't, Python doesn't explicitly know that it's this one here. But if I do have this global I, this error will be gone. So we need to keep that in mind. So just to recap, before we start, I have a bunch of variables which define all my flight dynamics along with control surface movements. And I'm just randomly changing their value by some number. Let's start flight gear. The aircraft will start at the ground one more time. 
with the engines off. We can start the engines. Even though the engines are active, the flight dynamics are disabled. So I just want to see how the plane looks like. Is it much better with the engines on? You can see that the attitude and the heads up display and more. Let's run this program. So the flight gear must be open and this Python script must be active. So let's press start. You can see that this time, you can see the control surfaces are moving a bit, especially the ailerons there and the rear as well. You can see that it, it's moving a bit. If you look carefully, it is a sine wave, so it will be slow. You can see how the airplane is moving away because we have changing the latitude and longitude. Now, obviously this is not a realistic simulation, right? I'm just randomly changing values. So you can see that the plane is just like doing something kind of impossible, right? Because look, I'm just testing here. I'm not doing anything specific, but we can see that the airplane is moving and this value of I, you can see it's incrementing here. We have 1,400, it's keep on going because I'm printing it at each time step. If we have this open side by side, you can see that the height is going up. The roll pitch and the yaw are slowly changing with time, as you can see in this here. I've set my frames per second to 50 frames per second, so you may have to change it. I'm just gonna stop it here. So we can see that we have done a simulation where we have tested all the parameters of the airplane for flight dynamic inputs. Now we'll move on to the best part, which is yet to come. For my last example, I will be doing a simulation from data which comes in from an external file. I've restarted flight gear. I've also reopened Python along with my last test script. Let's go over this code. In this case, I have a file called trajectory height. It's a CSV file. If I preview it, you see I have my height and my pitch angle like this. I've just made up some data from a table and input it there. I'm just testing to see that values from a table can be loaded into Python and then visualized into flight gear. So here I have my code. I use the pandas library. So in Python, there's a tool called pandas that lets you read files very easily. It's useful for data analysis and database management. So in this case, I'm using panda.readcsv to read my CSV file. I then load my columns into my two variables. So h values is data.height, th values is data.data. If I open my CSV file here, you can see what those correspond to. So I have height and pitch angle data there, and then I have my values below it. So you load it like this here. If I show you on the side what this will look like, let me import pandas and do this line by line. Let's run this file here. If I view data as a whole, you can see the entire table is loaded. I have empty columns, so you can see more columns, seven, not just two of them. If I go on the top, I have height and theta. So this comes from my CSV file name. I had named the columns height and theta on the top. So I have this two here. You have to give it a name so you can read the values in like so. So you can see height is 50, 55, and so on. Theta is 0, 0 0.015. It goes up in increments and then goes back down to 0. If I then say data.height, I have this column. But if I say height 0, that corresponds to the first value. 1 is second value. Let's say like 35, that's the 36th of a value in my table. You can do the same thing with the angle as well. Theta here. So I have, I'm just viewing a random value, 0 0.075. When I have th this, I can then use them inside my callback. So I establish an FTM connection. I connect my receiver and my transmitter in the same way as I did before. I have a 0 0.05 second sleep time. Inside of my callback, at each iteration of my loop, this value of I will increment and then it'll go to the next value. So I'm doing a time-based simulation of my height and my pitch angle. At each value of time, so at each time step, the value of i will increment and then it'll pick that from the table. So if I open my table here, I can show you visually what that'll look like before I start. 
So I'm just going to open this file here in text edit. Okay, so we can see that at time zero, we have 50 and zero. Then the next time step, we have 55 and 0 0.015. It'll increment in the simulation here. And you can see what this will look like. So let's run flight gear for now and let's start this program. So let's start the engine. Oh, one second. Yep. So initially you will see, let this reset a bit. We can press play and we can see what our simulation will look like. So I'm just going to press play here. Oh. Okay, so it looks like it's already in use because the local host is active. Looks like I didn't restart Python, so let, let me just restart that here. Start the airplane here. So when you press play, you can see that the aircraft pitches up and then pitches down. This is once more not a realistic simulation, it's climbing straight up because I'm not... I've only changed the height and the pitch angle, I've not changed the direction in X, so latitude or longitude, so it'll just go up straight. And you might be wondering why this is looping around. If you see my Python script, I say if, if I is more than 173, I restart. So I'm just doing a loop because when I exceeds this value, because my last column, my last row is 174. So that's this index here. If I go one further, it'll error out. I want to restart my simulation there. So I just set I back to zero and then it'll keep continuing. You see the values of height they print out here because I'm printing out the values. I do an offset by 20 for the altitude. So it'll start above the ground, not below the ground. So you can see that how this callback will use the values in my table for height and the angle in this case. So I want you to think about what you can do with this. There's so much that you can do. You can run simulations from scratch by just having a, a values of time versus all the states of the airplane, for example, latitude, longitude, and more. And you can visualize all that in this kind of a simulation here. So I hope this has given you the building blocks to build your own simulations. All you need is a time step values, time series values of your aircraft states from time zero to time ending. And you can see what they look like here. You can also see in the heads up display that that's the value in feet. So it'll multiply it because it's in meters inside of my Python code. So it does it automatically here. You can see the pitch angle go up and then back down. It's in degrees in this case and my input's in RAT, so it does the multiplication accordingly. You now know how to build simulations in Flight Gear from Python. So thank you for watching. You now have a full understanding of how to work with Python to build your own simulations and visualize them. I want you to take a step back and think about the possibilities with this. You can literally design your own drones or airplanes, build navigation and guidance algorithms for them, and visualize their autopilots in Flight Gear. I've made a video quite a while back on integrating a CAD model. So you can literally design your own models and import them and visualize them. So you can use Flight Gear as a complete simulation suite for your custom built airplanes as well. By using Python, you have a simple way to connect and send data back and forth. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye.